Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Abdul Qahar Sarwali, and I am uh, from Afghanistan, but I did my uh, master's and PhD in Malaysia. Uh, currently, I am doing uh, postdoctorate uh, research. Before that, I was uh, senior lecturer and also chancellor of a university. Now, uh, I'm focusing based on the change of new uh, trends in uh, media and communication technology. I am to uh, focus on the changes and uh, help both communicators and educators uh, to uh, follow some ways that help them uh, based on the new changes in technological uh, and uh, theoretical as well uh, trends and situations in our field. Uh, nowadays, uh, based on the uh, uh, decision of our department uh, that uh, uh, selected me as uh, one of uh, collaborators of our program, which is a mobility program for uh, restricted Indonesian students. Today I want to talk about uh, uh, important, one of the most important uh, trends and issues in our field, human communication, which is AI or intelligent, artificial intelligence and uh, mediated intercultural communication. Why we uh, want to focus on uh, mediated uh, communication? Because you know, after COVID-19 or uh, pandemic, mostly people used to interact uh, for their education, for their uh, daily work and everything, uh, through the use of uh, different communicative technologies, computers, mobile phones, even say many things. But nowadays, uh, a new friend of uh, uh, communicators, communication scholars and students, which is uh, artificial intelligence or AI. That's why uh, we want to have a, a short discussion uh, about the predictable impacts of artificial intelligence or AI on mediated communication among people from different cultures. We can be from different cultures, from different nationalities, or in some countries like Malaysia and Indonesia, there are some different uh, subcultures. Here we can uh, focus on our uh, uh, differences based on uh, some uh, perception that help us to uh, conduct a helpful and positive interactions. Uh, that's why uh, inshallah we'll talk about uh, these things. First of all, uh, as we talk about uh, human communication, mostly we have two kinds of uh, communication. Previously we had, the first one is direct communication, when we interact with one another uh, personally. Uh, the uh, concept can should be uh, interpersonal communication between individuals or intergroup communication between groups or any kind, intercultural communication between two people from different cultures or intergroup, uh, intercultural intergroup communication between two groups from different cultures. But the second type, uh, which is mediated communication, we need the third intermediator or uh, facilitator, which is machine or uh, technologies that enable us or help us to uh, communicate. As I mentioned it uh, before, after COVID-19, mostly people used uh, machines, computers, mobile phones to interact with uh, one another. But today, uh, the trend has changed. Previously, we used computers and machines as facilitators or mediators of our daily interactions for our uh, daily works, for our uh, education and everything. But nowadays, we can interact with machines. Or machines became as communicators instead of facilitating uh, communication. You know, uh, chatbots, uh, intelligent machines which powered by uh, artificial intelligence, they cannot interact with people. When we ask something, they answer. When we uh, uh, share some uh, idea, they may produce, they help us to produce some information or even create questions for many things. That's why the main uh, new uh, trend in uh, mediated communication is the position of machines, especially uh, uh, intelligent machines changed from the mediator of communication to communicators. It means that nowadays we can communicate with machines instead of using them as mediating communication between us and others. Actually, we can keep both. But nowadays, mostly 
people use some uh, uh, chatbots or uh, intelligent machines to uh, produce information or to do some jobs. That means that without the interference of second person or other people. Okay. Uh, when we talk about uh, communication, especially in the countries with different people, with different uh, cultures, and also uh, in, uh, at uh, international universities and organizations which host people of different cultures. Now I'm from Afghanistan, but I uh, already studied in Malaysia and now work in Malaysia. Now you're from Indonesia, I see different faces, but actually uh, Indonesian people uh, from Indonesia, which is a very peaceful and good country, one of uh, actually the largest Islamic country. Uh, we are from different regions, from different cultures, from different languages. So I speak Persian language, you speak uh, Basa, uh, Indonesian, or maybe Chinese, or some uh, different languages. But as educated in, uh, the human beings, we respect our uh, different aspects of our lives and cultures. At the same time, we keep uh, interacting based on our needs or based on our uh, daily lives. When we uh, talk about uh, interactions, uh, we mostly focus in this course, and also based on my uh, experiences in professional education, on intercultural communication, especially Nowadays, besides learning how to use uh, modern technology, especially uh, that uh, new, uh, uh, most uh, advanced technology, which is uh, artificial uh, uh, intelligence, we have to know some trends and some skills to interact properly and effectively, effectively with people or individuals from different cultures. That's why we uh, talk about intercultural communication competence. But immediately we cannot move or jump to intercultural communication competence because intercultural communication competence a concept that uh, constructs on the basis of interactions and uh, relationships among or between, between people from different cultures. Before that, uh, all things belong on our attitudes, uh, skills, uh, and uh, points of views and worldviews, how we consider or how we want to interact with people of different culture. When we uh, interact or communicate with people of our own uh, cultures and nationalities, we may use some uh, particular uh, uh, norms and uh, steps or uh, some uh, particular uh, considerations based on our interactions, maybe we interact friendly. But whether we use the same aspects and attitudes and points of view when interact when we interacting with people of different cultures, that thing belongs to intercultural sensitivity. Yeah? Before uh, for making or uh, constructing uh, the uh, concept of intercultural uh, communication competence, uh, we need uh, to focus on interpersonal skills first. When we interact in any kind of communication with people of different cultures, or with our own people, we have to focus on our interpersonal skills and improve our interpersonal skills. Because at first we know how to interact. It means that when we transfer something, we know we have to know some containers and some facilities. <coughs> then after that we put different uh, uh, contents and different issues or different things. That's why the first thing in human communication after intrapersonal communication, you know intrapersonal communication, which belongs to the actions and reactions of our internal body, that our internal organs that make and produce messages, and uh, which are especially the main organs that help us to uh, produce messages and information our heart and mind, and uh, our autonomic nervous system, yeah? The interaction between heart and mind and autonomic nervous system and some of our internal body help us to uh, conduct intrapersonal communication. In intrapersonal communication here is no need to have another person. Just we, inter we think and we interact with ourselves. One part of our internal body interact with another part to exchange information, to exchange uh, impulses and to uh, create information. But that one is not uh, accessible for other people. Maybe uh, when I think or you think anyone thinks about anything uh, or make a uh, decision to make a decision, 
actually no one can see the procedure but when key, uh, one, uh, once the person decided to, info, to share an information based on uh, intrapersonal communication then we can evaluate based on what based on the reactions actions and reactions in that procedure actually interpersonal communication skills or communication when we interact with one person when we try to inf uh, share information with another person or a group of people and after that for uh, establishing the concept of intercultural uh, communication competence and establishing the uh, uh, a very good level of intercultural communication competence and cultural awareness. The first one, if we uh, assume as a coin, one side is personal skills, interpersonal skills, and the other side is cultural awareness. And between them, intrapersonal communication procedure, yeah? our internal body. What is cultural awareness? Cultural awareness is just being aware about our own culture and other cultures. When we talk about culture, at first we have to know that there is not just one culture. There are many cultures, different cultures. And there is not the best or worst culture, there are just different cultures. When we respect our own culture, we have to respect other cultures as well. And the second thing, which is most important thing, is intercultural sensitivity. The difference between intercultural awareness and intercultural sensitivity is that cultural awareness we merely get information about culture or cultures. We may have a positive uh, attitude and idea about or maybe negative or just neutral nothing. But when we come to uh, intercultural sensitivity state, which is one of the most needs of current world, which full of multicultural organizations and uh, perspective, intercultural sensitivity, that we decide to establish a point of view or world of view regarding different cultures, to learn about different cultures and appreciate differences. You know the difference? The first one, when we talk about cultural awareness, we just learn about cultures. We know this is, uh, that there are different cultures, this culture belongs to this country, that culture belongs to that country. These are the main uh, basic uh, aspects of uh, cultural issues, but when we come to intercultural sensitivity state, we have to establish a positive point of view, view regarding the differences that it's, uh, it belongs to different cultures, different people, they, they deserve their rights to be different. We can be different, but we can be in contact and we can establish good relationship. We start being uh, uh, model for uh, intercultural uh, sensitivity. There are actually two uh, two uh, main concepts. One is ethnocentrism, and another one is uh, ethno relativism. In ethnocentrism, mostly uh, people or individuals they focus on their own culture. They think that their culture of the only option in their culture is the best culture in the world. Other culture cannot take place. Other people must follow their culture to be the best in some countries unfortunately because of such problems they cannot be, uh, live in peace and in harmony during my stay and study in Malaysia and also my information about Indonesia these two countries very best the best countries for uh, intercultural interethnicity and inter-religious uh, uh, harmony they respect one another and they know how to live with another in uh, peace and they focus on things. One of the most important things, uh, people in Malaysia, Indonesia, Malaysia, and some countries, uh, they live in peace and they uh, enjoy their life. Uh, they actually experience some developments in their education. The main thing is they uh, respect their differences. They accepted that all of us humans, we are different, but we are humans, we live in the uh, same homeland and we. Uh, share same identity, but in some countries, unfortunately, the main problem, uh, the lack of education and the lack of positive attitudes toward, toward differences. In another, uh, ethno relativism, okay, uh, people accept differences, and after acceptance, they adapt some differences and they try to integrate based on different cultural aspects. And when we came from intercultural, uh, interpersonal skills, then cultural awareness and intercultural sensitivity, based on our actions and reactions and experience, we can establish 
intercultural communication committees because intercultural communication committees in the verbal and practical aspect of our daily interactions when we interact properly with different people. When we, if we uh, Define intercultural communication companies. Intercultural communication companies is the ability of conducting helpful, helpful, and uh, 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 proper interactions with people of different culture, regardless of their, their differences. It means that when we, you are from Malaysia, uh, Indonesia, I'm from Afghanistan, we are in Malaysia, in the third country, and we interact, yeah, just very peaceful and very good. When we interact properly, and we share our information based on respect, uh, mutual respect, it means that we are the major in intercultural communication companies. This is the uh, issue of intercultural communication companies. And the main thing for today's lecture, which is maybe interesting and new for all of us, is uh, artificial intelligence uh, or AI and AI powered systems. Actually, when we talk about uh, artificial intelligence, or uh, AI, we have to know that uh, artificial intelligence in AI is not uh, just in one night or one way or one week produced uh, conceptual phenomenon. It's actually, uh, it become from the mid uh, 20th century, uh, uh, from 1943 with the, with the establishment of first uh, procedure and also uh, in 1951, uh, throughout the establishment of first network of the basic network of uh, artificial neural by uh, 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 Minsky, which is a, one of the pioneer uh, scientists in this field. And after that, especially in uh, the uh, Dormont Conference in 1956, they introduced the term of artificial intelligence. It means that from that time, people used artificial intelligence somehow in their uh, daily activities in their education and their communication. But nowadays, especially after uh, 2021, by sharing uh, ch chat uh, GT GPT, uh, people thinking about uh, artificial intelligence and the uh, 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 machines, uh, intelligent machines that work uh, by support of artificial intelligence. At first, we have to know that what is artificial intelligence and how artificial intelligence works when we have something in just uh, GPT, you know? Immediately answers, if we have ask one person about one thing, he may give one or two answers. Then we ask uh, chat GPT, it uh, shares maybe different an answers, more than 10 answers, why? The main thing is, uh, as I mentioned it, uh, 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 Minsky and uh, his friends you know, establish the first uh, model of uh, neural network or uh, artificial neural network to uh, enable machines to exchange neurons, exchange uh, information, and ex exchange inf impulses to uh, enable people for the uh, processing of big data to use for uh, computing, to use for calculating, and also producing. Uh, uh, like uh, different texts and also uh, transla uh, language translation. These were uh, these such things were the main and the uh, basic aims of people who try to establish artificial intelligence networks. Artificial intelligence is uh, based on uh, artificial neural networks, which is similar. This one is a uh, uh, neural from the real intelligent, real mind and brain of human beings. You know when we talk about uh, human beings neuron, neuron which is uh, uh, the basic center and point that, uh, that uh, keeps and transfers and processes information. Our neurons, our, uh, uh, mostly uh, our neurons consist of uh, uh, three main parts, which are uh, uh, dendrites, uh, main body or main cell and uh, axons. When we say that these are uh, dendrites, these are uh, means, uh, this, uh, this is means, uh, also axon. And through axon, when uh, an information on our team comes to our neuron, uh, our neuron uh, takes that from other neurons or from other channel of neuron and uh, through synapsing, uh, through the use of uh, what? Dendrites. There are many dendrites. You know, any dendrite can take uh, the information which comes or impulses which comes from other neurons. 
Then it comes to uh, the main point, the network then it, when a neuron wants to transfer a signal, a charge, which is the basic point of information in all things, all actions, reactions, uh, uh, among or between uh, human beings and all life uh, beings, then draw axon, it goes to a uh, synapse area, which is an uh, area between different neurons. Then another neuron takes that, that, that one and based on the uh, real charge and the level of charge of uh, that uh, impulse, another neuron takes decision whether to send uh, that impulse to another neuron or not. The same things, but this is the artificial, they use the same things, but actually it is very difficult for them to design the same thing as a lot of small auto lot design. But they did some things. And also, uh, they are focusing in, uh, in the artificial intelligence on artificial neural networks. In artificial neural networks, when they design to connect different neural uh, aspects in artificial intelligence uh, uh, networks and artificial networks, they uh, enable it, artificial intelligence and artificial machines to know the procedure of self-awareness and also interact based on that, exchanging signals. The main thing, uh, artificial intelligence and artificial uh, power, it, artificial intelligent, uh, intelligent power, it, uh, machines, uh, especially chatbots works. The main thing is, the main abilities are three things. The first thing, they uh, uh, mimic or stimulate the, based on the uh, procedure of neural networks and activities in human mind, they exchange it for the uh, uh, charges and uh, 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 that uh, signals, voltage, and also that uh, the information which required based on the charges from one neuron to another neuron based on the artificial dendrites and axons. You know, dendrites mean the receiver. When we have a, you know, previously we all still we use a TV to watch different channels. We have a you know antenna. Antenna help us to catch or to receive uh, the wave transmitted by uh, different TV channels. But there are some other antenna, big antennas. They what? They uh, exchange or transform waves to electromagnetic waves and send. You know, one antenna which is big antenna transforms the energy. They transform the wave to energy and sends to uh, the yeah which is uh, it's like the axon in both, or in, in intelligent in neuron and artificial neuron, and one is the antenna which we use to receive. That, uh, the uh, uh, dendrite and uh, neuron and also artificial neuron uh, do the work of what? The antenna which we use in TV or anything, radio or mobile phone, which you enable us to what? Receive the data, okay? The first thing is uh, actions and reactions between artificial neural networks or neurons. The second thing, ability, the use of what? Natural language processing. ChatGPT or other uh, boats or uh, artificial uh, machines, they use natural language processing. It means that they know the meaning of words. They know the structure of sentences. And they can establish that. Uh, uh, sentences based on the structure that human use. You know why nowadays some human beings, some scientists worry about uh, that uh, the very rapid uh, growth of our artificial intelligence because of the ability of using what? Uh, natural language processing. You know natural language processing is same. The ability as human beings use language as a means of interaction and communication. It means that when you can produce words, when you can produce uh, or uh, make sentences based on different words and make uh, text based on different sentences and paragraphs, then you can make a, a text. You may make produce a meaning and also participate in uh, different uh, linguistic activities. Nowadays, artificial intelligence do the same thing, but actually different. But the main thing, the positive point of thing is, artificial intelligence, chatbots, chatgpt anything, they follow the structures that produce by human beings. 
and they do the things that harder for human beings, and they work under the control of human beings. And there is a very fast or very uh, uh, powerful and also advanced artificial intelligent machines or uh, intelligent machine or chatbot. Then when you switch off, then everything is stopped. It means that nowadays, so far, human beings have control on artificial intelligence and they can take the benefits to regulate and produce some regulations to use properly, to use in the way that should be helpful for the human beings, for nations and people. There are uh, chatbots, like uh, one of the famous one now, chat GPT, people mostly use, maybe you use. Chatbots that uh, AI powered softwares, AI powered softwares that work based on uh, natural language processing. Actually, chatbots uh, package of big data, you know? The uh, scientists they gather in big data. Uh, maybe data from different years, different centuries about different issues. They gather it. Maybe they use maybe silicon and some things to as a basic points to gather data. Then they code the data. You know, they code the data and enable it. Uh, they also establish artificial neural networks. They connected these neural networks, the artificial networks, the artificial neurons through their dendrites and also axons. They enable them based on the trainings. They, they teach, they show, or they, they guide uh, this procedure how to work. You know? Then, through the establishment of a very big concept and a very big uh, sphere of uh, neural networks, artificial neural networks, and also gathering of a big package of data, they established what? Chatbots or intelligent machines for other things. The uh, machines, the physical uh, part of machine, just uh, uh, the means that enable uh, data to be pursued, pro uh, pursued. But the main thing is that uh, artificial signals and uh, the ability to uh, produce or uh, use natural language processing and generation, even generation, because machines nowadays produce sentences. And the main thing, as a communicators, as a students of communication or uh, professionals of communication in journals for us, that prompting, prompting or prompting in prompt engineering, you know, the prompt or instructing machine chatbots. The main thing nowadays, okay, uh, all people cannot be uh, uh, engineers of uh, chatbots or artificial intelligence. They know it because as uh, producers of computers, some particular people, they. Uh, produce computers and other people use. For uh, artificial intelligence also the same thing. We cannot, all people cannot code uh, artificial neurons, but the thing we can partake or participate in uh, helping artificial intelligence to uh, establish a rich concept of information for communication and journalism in our field to participating, prompting, or instructing very helpful issues. It means that when we use chatbots, when we use uh, chat GPT or anything, we have to focus on our linguistic professionality, and linguistic ability, and language, language proficiency, you know? When we talk with another person, we focus on language proficiency. It means that the ability we can uh, talk clearly, we can uh, transfer message clearly, but when we interact with a chatbot or uh, intelligent machines, instead of language proficiency, we focus on prompting. The ability to prompt clearly and effectively. It means that we have to focus on three main things. The first, when we use, we have to use very clear words, sentences, and language structures. You know, because such chatbots, they learn from human beings. The uh, chatbots and uh, intelligent machines, intelligent uh, uh, artificial intelligence, they in the way of development. And actually, any section or discipline or professional people from any section, they do more contributions 
Around the entering good words, good sentences, good, uh, good structures, some language structures, it means that in the future there would be a good uh, sphere and uh, good abilities and possibilities for that profession. That's why when we use uh, artificial intelligence chatbots, we have to use uh, proper words, proper uh, sentences, and good uh, language structure. The second thing, we have to use, uh, hotnessly use, real information. Because when we use real information, the main concepts that uh, may structure it in uh, chatbots and different artificial intelligence should be uh, real and would be helpful for people in the future who use. Because in the future, maybe it would be difficult to control uh, artificial intelligence or regulate it. But now we can. We can do some things at least. But we have to be active. And the third thing, we have to focus on main concepts of our uh, professional, professional uh, activities, like uh, the basic things of communication, especially ethics. When we use anything as a mediator of communication, or anything as a one side of communication, we value our time, we value our words, we value our abilities when we interact. That's why we have to teach artificial intelligence through prompting, through regular prompting, that such regulations are important for interactions uh, among human beings and also between uh, human and machine. Yeah, this is uh, the main thing. And uh, actually, uh, if some people say, okay, okay, uh, I uh, just prefer to interact with individuals without the use of any machine, without the use of any uh, AI, artificial intelligence, and I uh, like to have natural interactions. As previous to uh, uh, COVID-19, many people said, okay, uh, we don't like to use computers, mobile phone, we have to enjoy direct interactions. But, you know, COVID-19 made them force them, because there were no other option for students to interact with lecturers, for lecturers to interact with uh, administrative uh, people, uh, for customers and customer uh, care people and team, there was the only option to use mediated communication, computers, mobile. You know, nowadays, almost all people know how to use computers and mobile phones and machines to interact. But if we say, okay, okay, no need, uh, we like to keep the original aspects of human communication, we have to focus on human aspects and be in real interaction with people. But we cannot stop artificial intelligence. We have to be prepared and we have to learn some basic aspects and we have to use this. Okay? It means that uh, when we prepare ourselves with knowing the main aspects of, uh, being aware of the main aspects of uh, AI or artificial intelligence, especially historical aspect that I mentioned, it is not a very new. It is new for all people, but actually it began uh, its activities from mid-20th century. The first conference on uh, artificial intelligence uh, by uh, Premier uh, very famous scholars like uh, 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 McCarthy and uh, uh, Minsky and some others, in uh, 1956, which in Dartmouth, uh, it was in Dartmouth uh, College, in the United States. It's, 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 it's more than half a century. But at first it was very basic. As those people didn't have that, okay, one day uh, artificial intelligence will, will do the language processing, information processing, and many things as human beings. They tried to use just for some calculations, computing, and some things. But nowadays it's very powerful. But still under the control of human beings. Uh, still follow the way we produce language structures. Still, uh, it works when we switch on and just stop working when we switch off. But in the future, maybe there would be some autonomous ability to just switch off and switch on uh, or independently. Okay? And uh, nowadays, if we, instead of criticizing, instead of just being uh, away from AI, we can uh, actually use AI and AI, AI uh, powered uh, intelligent machines and softwares, chatbots, as a good uh, facilities for enlarging 
our ability set human communication or establishing new concepts and also enabling different people, especially disabled people and some people who are not able to interact directly or interact properly with different people. It means that we can take the benefits or we can use properly AI or inter, uh, artificial intelligence in our daily interactions. And uh, when we talk about uh, artificial uh, boats or uh, machines or uh, intelligent machines, we have to know that. Okay, they are machines. They are complicated, but they work based on our uh, language processing abilities, natural language. Why we say natural language? Because uh, uh, previously some robots, they work based on that just uh, uh, some uh, keys or comments or some things that were different from natural language processing. Because they work based on some voices. We are the, with the people enabling uh, robots or some machines to work based on some uh, particularly uh, uh, orders they receive from voices, you know, previously. But the machine didn't know anything about the meaning of real meaning of that uh, word. They just used as a password or as a comment. But nowadays the machine knows what is the meaning of the word. The machine knows what is the meaning of the sentences. The machine knows what is the meaning of the uh, 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 program. And the machine knows what is the structure of this program. That's mean they use natural language processing. And also they produce messages, paragraphs, and sentences, and texts. That's why they can generate language uh, uh, outcomes and language co contents as well. And uh, besides, uh, actually, maybe in some case, how in some cases all of us used previously uh, AI or artificial intelligence in our uh, daily actions and reactions. Maybe if you use Jimmy, in two years ago, three years ago, if when you write, when we write some messages in Jimmy, if there is a mistake, it shows a duplicate. You can change this. This is already the use of artificial intelligence. Would we type type something in the uh, Word or some other uh, software, you know, some other thing, uh, some text, if there is a uh, mistake or uh, incorrect uh, spelling, they show that it did deserve the work of artificial intelligence. Or we, uh, when we produce an article, we write an article, we use uh, uh, maybe grammarly to fix it. This is artificial intelligence, the use of artificial intelligence. Who we uh, to use turn it in to check the originality. This is artificial intelligence. But such things were limited, but nowadays artificial intelligence is going to uh, take control of money. But we have to be ready to get, take control of artificial intelligence. And some uh, unavoidable because the effects and the use of artificial intelligence in the human life is unavoidable. We cannot stop. There would be uh, everywhere in uh, marketing and business and communication, uh, telecommunication, mobile phones, computer, and things. But if we uh, prepare ourselves with uh, good knowledge, the main thing, a positive attitude towards any uh, new uh, technological trends. So when we have positive attitudes, we can use positively as we uh, have to. You have to use uh, our differences as a positive thing to attract one another and uh, interact properly as uh, in the intercultural context or uh, intercultural context of communication. We can have a positive attitude toward uh, artificial intelligence and use properly to improve our abilities to transfer our messages, to receive our messages, and to learn things uh, fast and properly. That was the uh, second word, uh, the first word, uh, uh, short lecture I shared with you. And after that, we may have some discussion based on your questions.